Hello everyone. In this video, I want to compare NEOS to technological platforms. This will not be a comprehensive overview about the technical details of these two platforms. However, what I will do is I will compare the vehicles which are based on these platforms. And uh, by reviewing their parameters, we will have an overview about how the two platforms differ themselves. One of the differences, the charging speed, was really striking for me. So the two platforms are Neo Technology Platform 1.0 and 2.0. These are often abbreviated as NT 1.0 and NT 2.0, and I may refer to them for the sake of simplicity as NT 1 and NT 2. As you can see, there are three vehicles built on each platform but we will go through these on a NEO's website. So on NEO's website, there is this uh, models menu. And currently NEO has uh, six models. The first three are based on the new NT2 platform. And the last three are the older vehicles based on the NT1 platform. The very first uh, mass market vehicle for NEO was the ES8. This is basically a Model X sized uh, vehicle. Then the ES6 came, which is uh, a little bit bigger than the Model Y. And the EC6 is uh, the coupe version of the ES6. So these three are the older models on the NT1 platform. And this year, three new vehicles arrived on the NT2 platform. The first one is the ET7 which is a Model S-sized sedan. The second one is the Neo 85, which is a Model 3 size sedan. And the third one is the ES7 SUV, which in terms of size is uh, between ES6 and ES8. So if uh, we want to compare the two platforms, we can have a clue about one of the differences right from the pictures. As you can see, ET7 has uh, these uh, three bumps at the top. The middle one is uh, for the LiDAR and the uh, two at the side, I think uh, those are for uh, cameras. The same has for ET5, we don't have the picture here, and uh, the ES7 here. The other models do not have the same bumps on them, which shows that the sensors are different in the two platforms. Now, let us move to Arena EV. This is uh, quite a good uh, web page for uh, checking out uh, different stats of uh, electric vehicles. And they have a comparing tool. I have chosen three models. Two of them are based on NT1, and one of them, the ES7, is based on NT2. Here it writes ES7 because uh, that is the European name of uh, ES7. And the two older models are ES8 and ES6. So let us go through the differences. First of all, the ES7 has a better power. It has 480 kilowatts, which is 653 horsepowers. And the older models had only 400 kilowatts. So it is 20% better. The torque is also better. It is 850 newton meters of torque, while the older models had uh, 725 newton meters. And this power has an effect on the 0 to 100 kilometers per hour acceleration. The ES7 can do it in 3.9 seconds, while the ES8 was uh, one second slower. The ES6, which is a smaller vehicle than the ES7, is also slower by 0.8 seconds. Okay, this is a side note, but uh, the drag coefficient of the ES7 is also better than the previous models. It is 0.263 CD, while for the ES8 it is 0.29, and for the ES6 it is 0.28. And actually, for an SUV-shaped vehicle, this number is uh, quite good. The next difference is that the ES7 has better towing capabilities. 
it seems that the ES6 doesn't have any. The ES8 has 1500 kilograms and the ES7 has 2000 kilograms. The touch screens are also bigger and uh, as you can see, the new cars have LiDAR and better cameras. However, the most striking difference for me was the charging capabilities. This is my evreview.com and this webpage is actually very similar to arenaev.com. You can also find a lot of specification for uh, different electric vehicles here. And they also have a comparing tool and uh, this time I chose ES8 and uh, ET7 as a comparison. So ES8 is the old platform and uh, ET7 is the new platform. And as I said before, the most striking difference for me was the charging speed. And not even the difference, but the fact that how bad the NT1 platform is regarding DC fast charging. As you can see, it has a, a peak charging speed of 90 kilowatts, which is uh, really, really bad. It is even bad for an entry le level vehicle. And the ES8 is actually a high end luxury vehicle. Even the Peugeot E208 has 100 kilowatts of peak charging speed. And this is a very entry level vehicle. I know that uh, NIO has a great uh, battery swapping network in China, but still not every people likes to swap their batteries. So they have to DC fast charge it, or occasionally they have to DC fast charge it. So this 90 kilowatts is, is really bad, even if we consider that NIO has a great uh, battery swapping network. Fortunately, they have increased uh, these uh, DC fast charging capabilities to 130 kilowatts. And th that is a good number, but that is still the very bottom of where premium vehicles should be at the moment, in my opinion. There is also an improvement uh, in the EC charging capabilities from 7.2 kilowatts to 11 kilowatts. 11 kilowatts is uh, not bad, it's a good number. But uh, it is also where uh, the very bottom should be for premium vehicles, in my opinion. There are some vehicles which uh, provide 22 kilowatts of uh, AC charging, but uh, 11 kilowatts is okay, in my opinion. Okay, so these are the major differences between the two platforms. Some people may say that the computational power is better for the new vehicles. But actually, the older vehicles can be retrofitted with the newer onboard computers as well. So I do not want to count these here. As a summary, we can say that there are three major differences between the two platforms. The biggest difference, in my opinion, is the charging speed. The second difference is that the new platform has more power, torque and better acceleration. And the third difference is in the sensor system. The NT2 platform has better and more future-proof sensors for autonomous driving. Okay, we have arrived to the end of this video. If you liked it, please don't forget to comment, share and give it a thumbs up. And if you like the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.